How are you doing, folks? So here I have, well, you can read, it's a Neo Geo uh, Puzzle Bubble uh, MVS cart. Um, this was actually given by um, a friend of mine a while back. He said the cart wasn't working. There was graphic and sound issues. And uh, so um, I uh, recently got a, a working a working um, board here, uh, MVS board, Neo Geo. So we're just going to try and see what's wrong with this. I put this thing in. Uh, let's uh, give some uh, power to this guy. So far, so good. So this whole section was uh, corrupted initially. The edge connectors um, just needed to clean. But oh, oh my God, yes. So. So we get some music, so it just sounded some corruption on the uh, sound uh, bus, but um, we get some music, so could be the PCM. I know these things have a PCM uh, IC and all set of ROM. We're going to take this uh, cat apart. But um, I cleaned the edge connector. Initially, when I powered this, there was no... Let me just switch this off. Um, initially, when I powered this, there was no sound and the graphics were all garbled like there was a uh, very little coming on screen um the clean the, the cart needed a clean like in, inside everything needed a clean and then um and then that brought the uh, some of the graphics back but there was still kind of faulty graphics so i just cleaned the edge connector and the graphics came back so that was easy but there was no sound and i, I gave this another clean and uh, now this is the first time I hear some sound. So there's some sound coming, but there's some corruption uh, on the sound bus. So let's open this guy. And there you go. This is the inside of uh, the carts. It's a double uh, double PCB. They're actually not connected together. You can uh, sort of separate them. Um, I see a PCM here. So I'm assuming this is a soundboard program sound, maybe. And then graphics or programs and graphics. I'm not sure exactly. It wouldn't make sense that the sound. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of samples and things like that in these cards, so um, it probably requires quite a bit of memory. So, so it wouldn't make sense that it's on one uh, one card. But I don't know that for sure. I need to do some research. I know very little about uh, Neo Geo stuff in general. So, uh, it doesn't look like there's a there's a ton of stuff here. We're gonna see a, an LS139, uh, LS245. That PCM and just those three um, EEPROMs and, you know, resistors and things like that, um, caps. But um, these are rarely a point of failure, really. I, I suspect either we have uh, just a bad ROM. Well, look, it could be anything, but uh, I would suspect something here like this PCM is probably dodgy. Uh, I need to do some research. And uh, if that's what it is, I don't have a spare one, so um, I might have to wait until I get something I can fix it with. But um, uh, let's see first, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take those ROMs out and I'm gonna take those ROMs out and test them individually. Uh, and then we, we can start from that. Interesting, actually, I, I see a little patch here. This thing has been patched. Uh, should these, uh, is it because there's something broken? No, these are, these things, they shouldn't be connected to start with. And was there? No, I see no trace of those things. They, these would have been just two of those blue kind of pads, and they're linked together. So I need to actually look at the schematics of this. Maybe somebody patched it already, just to I don't know, get a tap a signal off another pin or something like that. Is this factory? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I need to. Uh, I need to do some research on this. All right, so it seems that um, the sound is on different boards as well. So here we got uh, the, all those V, um, V, I, C, V1, V2, and uh, I'm not sure that this is no. It's EP V1, V2 are sound. Um, they contain the code for the sound chip on the motherboard, and this contains code for uh, M1 here. Contains code for the SZAT um, uh, sound driver thing. So I need to. Well, these other these at least uh, three. Um, I think this is a fixed layer, 
so it's for like life bars and stuff like that um, and then I don't know graphics and programs um, what's that C4 C2 yeah I haven't looked further than that but uh, yeah so at least this and these two and uh, I need to check them in MAME uh, see that they match you know if there's a CRC error then you know I need to uh, reprogram one of these so we'll see so um, interesting discovery this set of PCBs is not actually an original um, uh, puzzle bubble um, it looks like it's a conversion from something else and uh, looking at this this type of card this Brock 2 is used I think there's only three games that uses fa uh, Fatal Fury 2 and uh, some of the soccer games um, so I'd say this was a conversion from one of those. Um, doesn't exactly matter which one, but I did uh, I did dump these two and um, this this one checked fine. Sorry, no, this one here checked fine. I did dump these two and I couldn't find a match. Um, well, partly because this is a conversion, so uh, they, they would have had to split the uh, the ROMs. So this is V1 and V2 here, and then uh, when I look at um, my software here, I just look into a, a next. Um, uh, next editor and uh, apologies for the dirty lens but the next editor here and uh, essentially I've put V2 and V1 together and it's sort of a match for uh, that V3 from the uh, puzzle bubble uh, ROM set so I'm assuming these were uh, just split at some point um, however you know I get a match you can see here it's more or less the same stuff I've done some random checks here and there but if I uh, if I dump it in uh, in um, uh, if I send it to Romident, I just get nothing. So I'm guessing that at least these two ROMs, or one of these two ROMs, are incorrect. So if I just send that uh, one and two together, yeah, there's nothing. But if I send that V3, so it's not, it's not that, you know. The, obviously, it gets found. So I am actually just going to take that v3 uh, um, and re-split it and then uh, burn uh, just burn two uh, two new rums raise those burn those two new rums and we'll uh, we'll see what we get so uh i've split the files into uh but that v1 new and uh, v2 new these were the uh, the original ones well the ones that were um burnt uh, v1 and v2 these are the new ones that i extracted from uh, from this file that I, I identified as being a combination of the two, V1 and V2. Anyway, um, if we check V1, uh, we see that the checksum here, um, the checksum comes to, uh, um, sorry to read to the phone, EF9E, and if I check V1 new here, uh, it checks, it is the same. However, if I check V2 here, uh, this is the data that was on the cart. Uh, and it's almost identical. I couldn't find exactly where it went wrong, but the checksum doesn't lie. Uh, OB6C, uh, and it should be OA33. Um, sorry. So obviously this was this second uh, second EEPROM here that was wrong. So I'm actually not actually gonna burn a new one like a V1. I'm just gonna burn a new V2, and uh, and uh, and hopefully, hopefully. That'll solve our issue. All right, folks. So I have well the PCB, can, you know, the individual PCB back in the board here, and uh, let's just see what we have. Um, I know there's a there's a version four of the uh, UniBIOS. I'll, I'll do that at some point. But so we get the intro sound, but that's handled by the board. Uh, Yeah, we still get those, uh, which is a shame. Uh, I, oh, okay, we got some music back though. I can't remember. I don't think this was uh, this was here the last time, uh, but we still have some corruption. So, um, so I'm gonna guess that obviously it's not these two guys. Um, and uh, unlikely this is here. This could be the PCM, or it could be this uh, multi, uh, um, what is it? Decoder, demultiplexer, um, LS139. 
I'm gonna do some probing here, um, not too much, but let's see if I can uh, spot anything and uh, report back. I got the schematics for the LS139. You can see the inputs here are um, one, one G, which is uh, just a sort of a, a select line or enable line, and in, then the select lines uh, A, B uh, are essentially the inputs, and the outputs here, uh, all the Y stuff. If we look at here, at this guy, and I started with this guy, but the, uh, let me get something kind of thin. Let me get the light here closer. If you look at these outputs here on this side, uh, so these guys here, one, two, and three, and four, and please zoom. So these guys are not connected. They're all going here. So I don't think we need to worry about these this side uh, and the inputs are just handled by the stuff but there's no jumper to uh, to work them so this side is essentially just you know dead well dead just not connected so we only have to worry about here uh, we got uh, um, G line here A B um, B is coming from here but it's actually connected to this so A is coming from here this is jumpered and B is coming from here and uh, let me just start this guy. Uh, this is what I found. All right, so we got our neighbor line here, uh, which is low all the time, which is good. It's active all the time. Um, I'm not going to try and uh, take A and B from here. Um, I cannot get them from here. So A is toggling, but B, there's nothing coming at B. B is completely dead on either side of that jumper. And B is coming, if I traced it, it's coming from pin um 78 on this guy and as you can see it is just dead there's nothing coming in fact if i bridge it with a, a nearby pin it sort of cleans out cleans up the signal a tiny bit not not a lot but it gets rid of that just ugly uh, distortion that uh, happens and replace it with a just cleaner square wave in a way you can hear that Because now we've got something coming out of a B, and now we get our dirty stuff. Uh, yeah, not great. So <clears throat> this guy, this PCM here, is is dead. Let me get rid of the sound altogether. And this PCM is dead, um, which means, well, hopefully replacing it would uh, bring back all our sounds. But I don't have, I don't have a spare of one of these, and the only one. One way to get it that I know is from another carrot, so um, I'd rather not do that. So what I might do with this carrot is maybe just uh, convert it to a, a diagnostic carrot of, of sort and just bring, um, change the M1 uh, chip to a diagnostic one and with the use of a diagnostic BIOS just use that as a, as a test carrot, you know, diagnostic carrot of sort. Um, unless somebody has a PCM to send me, you know, I'd love to have a, a, a working nicely sounding puzzle bubble because everything else works uh, would be a shame even though if it's a conversion but it, this is the type of candidate that sounds perfect for that type of conversion uh, if you want to know what i mean so hopefully this will be at least useful for a for a diagnostic card uh, i hope anyway folks um well this is it I, I i would love to see your working card but this is the way this is the way with a lot of repairs you know sometimes you get stuck because you can't have the right part uh, I'll do some research, maybe there's a, there's a way to uh, to get one of these. Um, but if not, uh, folks, I hope this was at least interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget, you can find me on Patreon, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, pretty much everything. Just type in you know, Ali, Banjo Guy Ali, or the 8-Bit Folks, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.